I would love to hear how you got the the job to work on Rogue One. Uh, you essentially you were telling us just before we started that you wrote the whole thing from scratch. So, and then of course you got revisions and all that. So take us through everything. Well, so let me, so let me first just clarify that to make sure, sure. That I'm not you know claiming more credit than than I'm due. I so John Knoll, who as you of course certainly know is kind of legendary you know one of the one of the pioneers of industrial light and magic and uh is still there in a very senior capacity and still does all kinds of amazing work john was actually the guy that came up with the idea of mm -hmm. doing the first star wars you know story that could be separate from the skywalker saga and his idea was why don't we tell the story of the rebels that stole the death star plans he basically wanted to tell the story of the opening crawl you know rebel spies during the battle yeah. rebel spies stole the secret plans and that was his big idea and he took it to kathleen kennedy and pitched her on the whole concepts and she she dug it he had like a whole presentation um but joe you know, john's not a writer he's a you know, visual effects guy and so they're like well we need someone to you know develop this storyline he didn't just have an idea he actually did have like i think it was like a two-page document that laid out very very early versions of you know Jin Erso and k2 and like some of the some of the characters were there uh, but they didn't have like it fleshed out, like, you know, they weren't ready to make a movie yet. And so uh, where I came in was, man, it's funny. I still remember um, where I was when uh, I heard that Disney had bought Lucasfilm and that Star Wars was coming back, you know, after having kind of laid fallow for so many years. I was, I was standing in line uh, at a Popeye's fried chicken waiting for my order. And I was mm. just scrolling through Twitter on my phone, just bored, you know, as you do. And my Twitter blew up and it was like, because of the news that had happened. And, you know, yeah. it wasn't even, they haven't even, haven't even announced JJ at that point. If you remember, it was Michael Arndt had been announced that was going to yeah, write right. what at that time was just known as episode seven. They were going to do seven, eight, nine, but there was no talk yet about standalone films or anything that all came later. But I, I remember immediately swiping away from my Twitter app and going to my phone and calling my agent and saying, I know that you all your clients are calling you today, but like, you got to get me in the room for Star Wars because that's, you know, why we're all, that's why I do what I do. And obviously this would be a dream. And I was fully aware of the fact that there was like hundreds of writers above me in the pecking order. One of the, one of the luxuries of working on a, or running a franchise like Star Wars, if you're Kathy Kennedy or Dave Filoni or whatever, like who doesn't want to come play with you? You know, it's Star right, Wars. Right. And yeah. so you can attract all this top tier talent. And, I thought, and you look at Michael Arndt, one of the biggest screenwriters in Hollywood was the first person there. I'm not on Michael Arndt's level, not even close. And so I thought, listen, I'm not going to, there's no way they're even going to take a meeting with me, but you got to shoot your shot, right? The 10 year old kid in me is going to never going to let me go to sleep at night if I don't at least try. And so my agent said, yeah, 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 I'll, I'll try, but you know what the odds are. Yeah, of course, but you, you got to try. And then some time went by and I could basically kind of forgot all about it. And then my agent uh, called me uh, back and said, do you want to take a meeting with Lucasfilm? They're interested in meeting you on a, on a general thing. So I, absolutely. And I live up here in San Francisco. Most of Hollywood obviously is down in LA. Oh, cool. But, uh, but Lucasfilm's kind of split. They have offices down at the Disney compound in Burbank, but they also have Lucasfilm up in the Presidio here in San Francisco, which is just around the corner from me. So let, let's set it up. Um, and I was super excited to go. They have a beautiful campus there at, at the Presidio. And I sat down and I was very nervous. I had no idea. There was no prep. It wasn't like, you know, get ready to pitch or anything. It was just like they want to meet you. And going, you know, meeting, going for a meeting at Lucasfilm is kind of like going for a meeting like the CIA. You know, they're so mm -hmm. secretive and they tell you nothing. And so I went in knowing nothing, and I sat down with um, these two amazing people who I came to love, Kiri Hart, who used to run the story group at Lucasfilm, and Rain Roberts, who was another senior story executive there. Kiri since moved on, but Rain is still there in quite a senior position. Now. I think she runs like the whole film group. And they sat me down, and I was like, why am I here? Like, you know, you know I love Star Wars, but like, do you want me to pitch you ideas? Like, what's going on? And they were just like, no, you know, we just want to talk to you. We're obviously talking to a lot of writers. We've got a lot of projects cooking right now, and we want to – basically just get a feel of who's out there and what kind of projects we might want to plug them into. They weren't interested in hearing outside pitches. They already kind of had a plan for what they wanted to make. It was mm -hmm. a question of like, can we find the right writers to pair up with the right projects? Right. And so I just talked to them about my love of Star Wars. I, just I talked to them about how when I was a kid and I was 11 years old, I cried at the end of Return of the Jedi because I was so overcome with emotion and how I would take my Han Solo action figure and put him in the ice cube tray and stick him in the freezer and freeze him in carbonite and then thaw him out under the warm under the warm tap uh, and just how much, you know, I just told all my little anecdotes and stories about just how much I love Star Wars. Yeah. And I kind of got the impression that, that maybe they were talking to me because I knew obviously that there's, there was going to be a big multimedia effort. There wasn't just going to be films. There would be television. There would be comic books. There would be video games, which is the world I come from. There would be all of these things, novels. 
And I thought they, I, I'd be happy to have done any of those things. I wasn't snobby about it. I thought anything that was Star Wars, just to contribute just a small piece to that canon would you know, be a dream come true. And they said, okay, well, nice to meet you. And I left knowing nothing more than I went in with. And I waited around for a while. I thought, oh, you know, they've forgotten about me. They've, they've found someone else that they liked for whatever project they may have been thinking of me for. But they did call back and said, hey, we're going to send you a document to look at. And they sent me this PDF. And uh, I opened it up. And it was this thing called Destroyer of Worlds, and this is that that's what it was called at the time. That was John. That was John Knoll's kind of code name for it. Yeah. And it was like this two-page document that basically laid out this idea of a team of rebels that steal the plans of the Death Star and set up, you know, what you know what what would go on to be a New Hope. And I genuinely called them and said, "I think you've sent me the wrong document here because this appears to be a treatment or an idea for a feature film." Mm -hmm. Like, surely that's not. And they, no, oh, yeah, no. What do you think? It's, oh my God, absolutely. Like, I'm in seriously. Yeah, and I kind of got—I kind of felt like very out of my depth. I was like, "Oh my god, you talked to me. You want to talk to me about like a live-action feature film? Surely there's someone better." And I almost kind of talked myself out of, talked my way out of the job. But um, they said, "Come in and pitch us some ideas for it." Now you know what it is. And I went back in, and John Knoll was in again. Any anyone who knows the Star Wars universe, you walk into a room and John Knoll's there. You're instantly kind of like, a, "Ah, like yeah. this guy's a legend." Yeah. And John was the guy who came up with the original idea for the story. And so it was me and John and Kiri and I can't remember who else may have been in the room, but I basically pitched him like my whole, my whole idea was like, basically this is a world war two men on a mission movie. Like I love those movies when I was a kid, I love guns and Navarone. I love the dirty dozen, mm -hmm. you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, Kelly's heroes, uh, where Eagles dare. And I was thinking particularly about where Eagles dare. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie, but Clint Eastwood and Richard Burton play these, um, you know, allied soldiers that have to kind of dress up like the Nazis in order to infiltrate like a German, you know, castle fortress on top of a mountain. And it's all very cool. And I, was, I remember thinking like, you know, that you can imagine like our, you know, our rebel heroes having to dress up like Imperial officers to infiltrate a base and that kind of stuff. And it was drawing on all yeah. of those kind of classic World War II influences. And then I also meant the other thing I mentioned was Zero Dark Thirty. I thought, I thought like this movie could have like a Zero Dark Thirty kind mm -hmm. of vibe. And I imagine Jin as this kind of character is much like um, Jessica Chastain's character and the one person going you know she's saying you know osama bin Laden's in this house you got to listen to me and take this seriously i imagine Jin is the one person in the rebellion saying the rebels the, the, the empire is building this thing and you have to take me seriously i've got all this evidence that the empire is building this thing that would come to be known as the death star i need to take me seriously that was kind of my my way in and again left the meeting without knowing anything it's not like they hired me in the room or anything but then they did come back and asked me to, and then I had, they wanted me to meet with Gareth and eventually with Kathy and eventually, you know, and then the, they had people at Disney and it was all these kind of levels and levels of kind of getting signed off on by different people. And finally um, I got the job and I found out subsequently after I got the job, John showed me the book that he used to pitch Kathy Kennedy on making the movie in the first place. And it had all these references in it and I was flipping through it. It was Dirty Dozen and Kelly's Heroes and Zero Duck 30. Oh, cool. And I just, it was just all the same. We were just on the same page in terms of what we thought like the cinematic reference points for the movie were. So I just got lucky in that my initial instinct for what the movie could be dovetailed with what John originally had in mind. And that's why they said, yeah, this guy. So, yeah. you know, sometimes you just gotta be in the right place at the right time, I guess.